Rulon Gardner was born on a dairy farm in rural Wisconsin in 1971. Growing up, he played football, threw shot put, and competed in Greco-Roman wrestling. He was good at all the sports that he played, but he really shined at wrestling. He won a national wrestling competition when he was a sophomore in junior college and he qualified for the United States Olympics team. And so he went to the 2000 Summer Games and competed in Greco-Roman wrestling. There, he faced the greatest living wrestler ever, a guy named Alexander Carolyn. And this guy was an absolute monster. He was born in the Soviet Union and Carolyn looked like he was cut from a marble cliff face. He was six feet three inches of pure muscle. And as far as skill and proficiency went, this guy was an assassin. For 13 years, Carolyn was undefeated in every single competition he entered 13 years undefeated. No one had even scored a single point against him in six years. When Rulon Gardner walked out across the map to face Alexander Carolyn in that Olympic Games, the announcers joked. They said Gardner looked like he had just gotten up off his sofa after eating a pile of Twinkies. Those kind of comments were not kind. But commentators were not kind about Gardner. No one believed he had any chance whatsoever against Alexander Carolyn. The analysts thought the match was a mere formality that Carolyn was just going to keep on extending his undefeated streak in perpetuity. Well, in the match, as regular time expired, they were tied, 0-0. Zero, zero. And so to break the tie, both wrestlers had to grip each other, and the first person to break their grip would lose. Against every expectation, Gardner broke Carolyn's grip and won the match, ended up winning the gold medal in that Olympic Games. Well, today we are continuing our sermon series within the book of 1 Samuel, where we read the stories of the prophet Samuel and King David. And I think there are a lot of similarities between this story of Rulon Gardner and our story that we read this morning. But last week, in 1 Samuel chapter 8, we encountered a God who is patient and loving and who never gives up on humanity. This morning, we read from 1 Samuel 16. And it recounted the way that God guided the prophet Samuel as they were trying to discern a new king for the nation. In 1 Samuel, God's Spirit leads the prophet Samuel to this small town of Bethlehem in order to discern who this new king should be. And at Bethlehem, Samuel meets this guy named Jesse. And Samuel tells Jesse that they're going to have a special worship service designed to discern who the next king will be. And that Jesse needed to bring all of his sons to that service. So Jesse assembles his sons, brings them to the service, and then Jesse selects the son that he knows is going to be king, Eliab. He selects Eliab because Eliab looks like a king. He's tall, strong, handsome, a guy who would command respect merely by walking into a room. But God did not select Eliab to be king. So Jesse 
brought out his other sons, one by one, seven in all. And God didn't select any of them. So finally, the prophet Samuel asked Jesse, do you have any other sons that you didn't bring? And Jesse says, I mean, yeah, I got this guy, David, who I left at home to take care of our animals while my real contender sons came here. And Samuel says, why don't you go get Jesse and bring him? And let's see what God says. So Jesse did that. He brought David. And God selects David, this unexpected son, to be the next king of God's people. It was similar in some respects to that way that all the analysts and commentators completely ruled off Rulon Gardner, demeaned him, made fun of him, said he didn't have a chance. They looked at Alexander Carolyn's physical appearance and his record, and they said, now that guy, that guy's an Olympic gold medalist, not this other person from rural Wyoming. When they looked at Rulon Gardner, they assumed he was out of shape and overmatched. What they didn't see is inside of him the spirit that growing up, working on that dairy farm from a young age, built within him. They couldn't see inside of the man that was there. They just judged based on outward appearances. My favorite line in the story from 1 Samuel that we read is this. God does not analyze situations the way humans tend to. Humans tend to look at the outward appearances, but God sees into the heart. And God this morning is inviting you and me into this way of looking at the world. Seeing through the superficial circumstances and looking at the heart of the people in front of us in the situations that we're in. We live in a world that so often focuses on appearances. Oftentimes we're encouraged to make a snap judgment based on a headline, or a momentary encounter with a person, or we're encouraged to write somebody off based on what somebody just tells us. But God invites us to look at the world in a different way. We are to actively look for the beauty and kindness within each person that God put there. We are to look past the surface of the situations we find ourselves in and try to discern how God's Spirit is moving at the center of them. Each person we encounter is a person made by God in God's image. And our, as our baptismal covenant encourage us, us to do, we are to look through whatever is on the surface of a person and look at that beauty and goodness that God has put inside them. And then we're invited to encounter that person in a way that draws that beauty and goodness out of them. We can engage with life on the surface. Or we can attune ourselves to the movements of God's Spirit and look for God's workings within the hearts of the people that are around us and within the situations that we find ourselves in. Friends, let us be a people that looks through appearances and sees the heart. Amen.